start with a former Missouri City police officer put to death. Fox 26's Sherman DeSalle joining us now live from Huntsville, where Robert Frada was executed just a little over an hour ago. Sherman. Yeah, good evening, Rashi. Frada was pronounced dead a little after 7.40 p.m. after giving the lethal injection. He's the first in the state of Texas to receive that for this year. Among some of the witnesses to see this execution was one of his children, one of his sons, and his estranged wife's brother. Now, this is the conclusion of a nearly 30-year case in which the former police officer hired hitmen to kill his wife, Farah, as they went through a divorce and a custody battle over their three children. Now, earlier today, Frada's defense attorneys tried to appeal the execution ruling. They claimed prosecutors were able to persuade a trial witness in their favor by withholding some evidence, but the Supreme Court denied that. Also, a Harris County Civil Court judge, Catherine Mozzie, issued a temporary injunction that prevents the state from using what she says are execution drugs that are expired. Pentobarbital is used in lethal injections in Texas. That's a common thing. The Department of Criminal Justice appealed that, and the Criminal Court of Appeals overruled that injunction. So family members, they chose not to speak tonight, but Harris County DA Kim Ong did made a, make a statement saying that the death penalty is deserved for the worst in America. Robert Frada had his wife murdered to settle a divorce, something that millions of Americans go through. It was a premeditated crime. It involved two other people, a middleman and a shooter. And the victim, Farafrata's life, was negotiated down to $1,000 and a car. For this, she was murdered. Make no mistake about it. Today is a day for Farah and her family. This is not about Bob. Bob was a coward in 1994 when he arranged the murder for hire of his estranged wife. He was a coward in 1994 and 28 years plus later he still was a coward Now, when asked about the planned executions or the date for executions for that hired hitman, Howard Guidry, and the middleman, Joseph Priestash, Kim Ogg says that that is yet to be determined. But coming up in the next hour, we're going to hear Andy Kahn give his promise that he says he kept to Fowler's family. $15,000 surety, but there have been a number, several changes in circumstances, uh, which now I would ask for, it, at the very least, a substantial surety bond in this case. The first reason I would ask for that surety bond is that the defense is now asking for a continuance for next week's trial, so he's not going to be walking in in the next few days. In fact, it appears that the defense is going to be asking for a continuance until I don't know when. Uh, from my discussions with them, every date that I've given them hadn't really been good enough. So I would ask for a surety bond since we're not going to try this case next week. Um, Obviously, this is an extremely serious matter. He's not looking at zero to 10 years. He's now looking at a mandatory minimum of 30 years. Second, Your Honor, or I would also, and more importantly, I would ask for a substantial surety bond after what we heard during the Stand Your Ground here. Uh, it's the state's position that after the defendant testified, there are a number of inconsistencies that we believe that we're going to be able to prove at trial with the facts in this case. Uh, we also learned during the Stand Your Ground hearing that this defendant has not had the most stable past, uh, that he was he did not leave the Orangeburg County Sheriff's Office like he said under direct examination. He was fired from the Orangeburg County Sheriff's Office for a number of acts that I submit are unstable, such as showing up for work drunk on duty. Judge, and for, I, I would object this thing. Is this, that's, that's irrelevant. It's not irrelevant. It goes to the, the, you, the court's already heard the testimony. And you can only be doing it for one reason, that's the prejudice. <coughs> I'm trying to prejudice so he gets a high bond, yes. You know, Judge, I, we have had notice from the beginning of, that he was going to try and get a warrant. Now, that an indictment, that doesn't mean you're going to get it. But the thing, we're on a surety bond now, and he's been no risk uh, since the time it was issued. No, and, and Mr. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. And, and I, I'm going to let him go ahead oh, and, and make whatever statements he wants, he wants to make for the record. This is for purposes of bond. That's for And it's not, it's not in front of the jury, so uh, I, I understand what everybody says. I, I know how to filter what everybody said. 
I'm fine. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. And again, it goes to the defendant's stability to stay on a bond. Again, he is not looking at zero to 10 years. He is now looking at 30 years to life. And we learned that uh, he was fired from the Orangeburg County Sheriff's Office for showing up intoxicated to work. And also, he was disciplined for running someone down when he was off duty in his boxers or pajama bottoms with a gun. This is not a man that needs to stay out on a $15,000 bond when he's looking at 30 years to life. And that's the point I'm trying to make. Um, for all those reasons, again, I'm asking for a substantial surety bond. I will point out uh, that there are some, uh, Mr. Bailey's family, I received a letter uh, from Mr. Carl Grant, who represents the family, from Mr. Bailey's brother, William Bailey Sr., who lives in Maryland. I'm going to read what he requests. It says, I, William Bailey Sr., the oldest brother of Bernard Bailey, am running on behalf of myself and my family to request that the judge not give a bond to Richard Combs who murdered our brother on May 2, 2011. I can give this to um, Ms. Hill and make that part of the record. Okay. Anything else? That's all I have. Thank, Thank you. Judge, the only, the only thing I'm going to say basically is he hasn't been a flight risk. He's been on a bond. They, from the beginning, if they're going to do a an indictment for murder. They they, uh, they brought the other charge. He's been out on that. He's had no problems uh, while he's out on bond. He's no, he, he is not unstable. He's obviously complied with everything with the bond that he's currently under. The uh, he had no real no prior record, uh, and he's uh, he's a homeowner. Uh, he lives. He's a resident of the, of the county. He has uh, had no problems ever with the law prior to this incident. We ask that it be a reasonable surety, or that the surety which he's currently under uh, be be run on that together with that particular surety. He will appear at court, and the court knows that. We've been here, we've been every appearance, and I think that uh, the statements made by the prosecutor were done for one reason, and I indicated that to the court, and it wasn't for the purposes of the bond, it was the purposes of the community. Nothing, just we asked for a reasonable bond, Judge. He has been unemployed for the last two years. He's under medical treatment. He is disabled. He's a Marine Corps uh, veteran. He's got serious back problems, as the court knows from the, from the testimony. Yes, sir. That's yes, right. And, and I've got all my notes from Just the only other thing, okay. could I say one more thing? I forgot. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, it's critical that, that we have accessibility to them. That's one another reason I would, I would ask the court to consider that. I mean, for trial preparation as to the witnesses that we need. And there is uh, the counsel uh, for, the, for the, the solicitor's office basically said that we were trying to delay this. I don't delay it at all. Our, our witnesses, as we've told the court before in chambers, the witnesses that we are critical to us are under medical condition and unable to be here. That was the reason. I think that was deceiving uh, to the to the outsider. Just deceiving. Well, and I, I agree with that. That that was the one witness I was talking about in communications with Mr. O'Leary after we just met Chambers. Right. Then I found out about a whole bunch of other witnesses he plans on having problems with. Oh, I did. Whether they're that. FBI agents, I U.S. Said attorneys. I said, yeah, they said, told him that when I find out the witness is under the medical treatment, I would find out the extent and how far that will actually go, as we discussed in the back. That's what I was talking about. I just said to him that I need specific dates to be able to issue subpoenas because a person doesn't have the money to serve the subpoenas multiple times as the government has unlimited funds to serve. Yeah, come take a look at my budget. Tell well, me whatever. <laughs> I'm a judge. I'll back no, off. Well, I, I understand, and I've, and I've gotten the better reports. I, I'm aware of the situation with one of your witnesses. And, and Mr. Larry, you did mention to me in chambers that you might have uh, issues with an expert. The expert, I, yeah. I have not I'm not addressing that because you haven't given me any That was for this week, okay. Judge, for right. the 8th, the week of the 8th. Okay, all right. I've heard a lot of the testimony in the standing ground hearing, um, so I'm aware of a number of the issues that are going to be a trial. Um, Mr. Combs is facing some very serious charges. Um, and any time you're facing charges where you're looking at a minimum of 30 years in jail, um, the issue of flight risk is always a concern to the court, and I have to ensure that he will be present. I understand that while he's been charged with misconduct and office, he showed up and we haven't had a problem with him. Uh, and I understand from, from the testimony there are issues uh, uh, that will come up 
uh, and it doesn't have to be resolved, but that it's before a jury, um, that he may have uh, some issues that, uh, to explain the situation and explain what happened. Um, but because it's a serious charge, um, what I'm doing is I'm setting a $150,000 surety bond. It will be concurrent with his present bond. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Dixon. Thank Appreciate you, Your Honor. It.